Hi, welcome back to our series on stuff I learned from getting over a bunch of mental illnesses. Last time, we talked about the importance of walking off the battlefield. So not making this fight with enemies in our heads and our souls, whatever the focus of our work. When that topic comes up, one of the questions that then often follows is, okay, if I'm, I'm not going to measure progress with recovery around things I hate that I want to get rid of, then how are we going to measure progress? How am I going to know if I'm moving in a useful direction? And I think that's a, it's a great question to bring up. And we're going to explore today how I found it most useful to track recovery. We're going to start out talking about two ways in that I would not recommend tracking progress with your mental health or even tracking the state of your mental health. So let's get into it. First up, I do not recommend tracking progress by the presence or absence of thoughts and other, you know, images and stuff like that that you hate. And this, this can be surprising to people at first and may even uh, not sound appealing because maybe the entire reason you are on this channel right now that you started to explore taking care of your mental health is because your brain was throwing up a whole lot of terrible intrusive thoughts, violent images, sexual images, voices, weird uh, uncomfortable physical sensations, obsessions, feelings that you're disconnected from reality, etc. And you were like, I do not like that. I want to get rid of it. I'm putting my life on hold because of it. I'm going to track progress by how we get rid of that. And that is not helpful. In many ways, that I, this is a bad contamination. I've got to get rid of it. That, that is what the compulsions are all about. That, in fact, is the actual problem. Judging that brain stuff, being like, oh, I hate this alligator. I've got to get rid of it. Like, that actually is the problem. That's the thing that's interfering. It's also very limiting. Uh, because, yeah, you may think it's like, oh, it's, it's great if I get rid of intrusive thoughts. I'm going to take some magic soap and scrub my brain and they're gone. It's actually very limiting. It's like somebody who struggles with drowning saying, well, I'm going to track progress by whether or not I'm avoiding drowning. Because I, I, I don't like that experience of being in the water and sinking. Of, that totally makes sense that we would want that. But if we're just going to avoid drowning... Well, then we can just go stand in the middle of the Sahara Desert. Be like, look, I am, I am not drowning. Is that progress? Is that success? I would say what we're going to look at today is that success is actually learning how to have those experiences. That progress is getting better and better and developing skills to interact differently with those experiences. Right? Progress with drowning is learning how to swim. It's not avoiding the water but at first our focus with mental health is often give me anything tell me anything that's going to help me get rid of the water i don't like that experience uh so watch out for that yeah if that right now you're like give, give me the secret magic soap that will get rid of intrusive thoughts and and then yeah maybe you, you do find something and then there's a day where you're like oh there were no intrusive thoughts there were no distractions there were no uh, obsessions no sensory motor issues that's amazing. Uh, yeah, I still, I wouldn't see that as progress. Because that also would be like going in the gym, be like, wow, I went to the gym today and there were no weights. I didn't have to lift anything. I am so strong. I have made progress. I have defeated weightlifting. No, like you, you, haven't, you haven't done anything. The absence of a thought uh, is not a skill. The second way of tracking progress that I do not recommend, and this, this may seem a bit of a duplicate to the first one, but I feel it, it's, I, I've learned it's very necessary to emphasize. I also don't recommend tracking progress by the presence or absence of feelings or tracking progress by your mood. This one especially may seem very surprising because I think as a society, we actually will generally kind of track uh, mental health or somebody's how somebody's experience is going in life by like how do you feel and many apps that are supposed to focus on mental health uh, they'll have a lot of mood tracking apps 
But the reason, and and hopefully, hopefully this you know is something that you know, becomes obvious to you as you're struggling uh, or navigating a difficult, serious mental health issue, is that quite often our feelings are wrong, and also our brain's uh, perception of what we'll see as like as a good feeling often leads to really, really, really very terrible outcomes. Thinking about when I struggled uh, with mental health issues, yeah, I, I, there were all sorts of compulsions. I did not see them as compulsions because I liked doing them. I wanted to do them. I wanted to get that certainty. I wanted to get that good feeling and get rid of some bad feeling. If I was at, you know, filling out some you know, mood tracker app, if when I was clicking that my mood is good, that was actually an indication that I was doing some really, really terrible things for my mental health. As well, just our perceptions uh, get so skewed when we're deep in the practice of making our mental health terrible. A great example of that, uh, I'm pretend washing my hands here, because a great example of that is somebody who struggles with any kind of contamination compulsion, health anxiety, you know, checking physical sensations, that fear of some kind of contamination, I've contracted something. No matter how many times somebody might wash to get rid of a contaminated feeling, no matter how objectively clean they are, the brain is still gonna go, oh, I think you feel contaminated. I see that too in, in things like when people are struggling with the relationship issues, the relationship might be going great it's like, oh, I don't, I don't know if this is going well. You better check for reassurance. Oh, I don't, I don't know what your partner is up to. Oh, you better, you know, go check. You better control them. That perception there is just wrong. Paranoia is another, another great example. I used to think people were watching me all the time. I believed it so completely that when I went to get help uh, for the first time, when I went to get therapy, I didn't even bring up the fact that I was convinced people were watching me because to me it was completely real. But that perception was totally wrong. So I don't find it useful to track progress uh, by feelings just because often our, our interactions with feelings, how we're chasing feelings uh, has been so involved with getting us into the mental illness pit. So if we're not going to track progress by these thoughts and feelings and images, voices, weird physical sensations, lack of connection, etc., we're not gonna track progress by those things we hate, by that monster, how do we track progress? And yet at the same time still deal with uh, yeah, a pretty big challenge issue in our lives that can be quite debilitating. This is where the duck comes in. Uh, and uh, I was kind of limited by what they had at the store. So, I mean, from now until whenever this channel ends, the direction we move in life will be signified by a duck. So we move towards the things that we want to create and grow in the world that we want to give to ourselves, to our communities, to our planet, the things that we want to keep. And yes, this, this may seem strange at first, because we may have just, in, we might have spent, who knows, a decade so focused on trying to find that magic soap to get rid of the monster, to try to fix it, multiple therapists, multiple drugs, multiple every supplements, books, etc. We may have spent so much time on this. We may not even know at all what this duck is. And that, that's totally okay. I, I was in the same place. Like all, all of my goals were just about uh, doing things that made my mental health really terrible. I didn't know what I valued. I valued you know, whatever anybody else liked because I wanted them to like me. I valued getting rid of uncomfortable experiences, getting rid of uncertainty. I didn't know how to move towards something proactively. I lived my, type, my life entirely reactively, reacting to this monster. So if this sounds weird at first, it's okay. We get to explore this. Uh, we get to learn. 
uh, where do we want to go and discover it's a, it's a complete shift though quite often this was always about getting stuff getting certainty getting control getting rid of the monster and the switch to our duck and where we want to go is about giving there are a couple characteristics uh, as you're exploring this, uh, a couple characteristics that I think you can help yourself with when it comes to identifying a useful measure of progress. Uh, so here, I'll explain those. So three characteristics of a useful measure of progress when it comes to mental health. This is going to be about actions. So things that you literally can do. So it's not about saying, okay, you know, the old direction was despair and my new direction is happiness. So first of all, that's just back into measuring progress with mood and feelings. It's not going to be another subjective uh, like concept, ambiguous concept where you're relying on the brain's perception again. You know, this is going to be an action, a very concrete action where you can say, look, I, I did the thing today that is moving me in the direction I want to go. Because I'm not chasing some abstract concept in the future. This measurement of progress is something I can do today. And then it's just about very objectively looking at, did I do it or did I not do it? And then the second characteristic of a useful measure of progress is going to be that it's happening outside of your head. And this is, you know, in part, because then we know it's an action, we can see, did it happen, like we were talking about in the first one. But it, a key component, and why I emphasize this, is because you're going to shift your focus to the systems and interactions, relationships, environments that you're navigating around you. Because so much of the time, when we're focused on fixing thoughts and feelings, and, and you know, the mental health system very much uh, has been an enabler in this, uh, the focus is on seeing you as having a problem. When it's very possible, you're struggling with all sorts of things, right? We just had you know, a pandemic, maybe your job got disrupted, things happening in your relationships, there's inflation in the economy, uh, you know, maybe you're in an abusive relationship, you're struggling with racism, sexism, homophobia, all sorts of different things that can be attacking you, and unfortunately, in the mental health care system, we would then say, oh, you have an anxiety disorder, right? You have a problem inside of you. There's a problem inside of your brain. We have to heal, but it's so useful as we start to work on mental health, especially if you really want to sustain great mental health and fitness, to shift the focus outside of you, to start to look at the systems around us. Sometimes we need to explore how to make changes in those systems. Uh, sometimes it's about simply noticing there's a barrier there and that constantly hitting that barrier is going to cause issues uh, and it's not going to be beneficial to work on devoting your time to fixing it. It just becomes like another monster. So how do you navigate around it? So really shifting a focus from you know, trying to fix some imaginary imbalance inside of you to looking at what are the imbalances around you and how are you going to interact with those systems uh, many of the measures of progress you look at may be about actions that are about changing uh, your environment or changing the way you interact with elements of your environment. And then the third thing to look for, really important here, is that whatever your measure of progress is, it allows for any thought or feeling or physical sensation or difficult experience, which in the past you would have judged as being a problem or some kind of interference with your goal. Where you're like, oh, I, I can't you know, start my business or I can't talk to somebody, I can't begin a relationship, I can't start school, whatever, if I'm having these terrible experiences. Because yeah, what if they overwhelm me? What if uh, they taint it so I'll always be thinking about it? All of that kind of stuff. A measure of progress makes space for having what in the past we would have considered some kind of contamination. To wrap things up, let's look at a concrete example. So uh, one of the ways I noticed that, you know, way back in the day, 
I noticed that I was struggling with my mental health is because I always wanted to be an author and then I took time off school uh, or I guess actually time off work at that point time off work uh, to write a book did not write a book six months just compulsion city all day making my mental health worse and worse and worse so a duck for me something I really wanted to do was write a book um, which of course now uh, we have uh, right this is the, uh, the Spanish version of uh, my book The Mind Workout or You're Not a Rock uh, in English of course for those of us who um, like myself are bad at Spanish so far <laughs> so uh, yeah I wrote a book and that was about really shifting the focus away from oh I've got to like fix some things or I've got to solve some things to saying look I, I want to write and I'm not because I'm, I'm you know trying to fix all of these uncertainties, trying to fix all of these feelings and stuff in my head. So this then is really about saying, well, how, how do you write a book well? And how do I make that my focus? Because also I, it's not about turning book writing into like this compulsion. I've got to like uh, sit at the computer all day and feel terrible if I didn't do something or, or I was distracted or something like that. It's really about the actions that lead to our goal in a way that's healthy for ourselves, healthy for those around us. Uh, and even you may notice that I mentioned uh, distraction or like doing some compulsions or something. It's really important to recognize that this, this stuff we hate, one of the things we easily turn into a new thing to hate are compulsions. Uh, and see, that just becomes the new thing where like, I've got to clean away all of the compulsions. I've got to have it perfect. And then of course we self-sabotage. We put ourselves in positions where we're going to practice compulsions. And then we're like, oh no, I'm not progressing. I've relapsed, etc. So also watch out for that. It's about identifying how to do the thing well. So if we say like, I'm going to write a book, how do I do that well? How, you know, maybe a, a what I like to do is get up early and spend a bunch of time writing, but then also I know I'm gonna go and do some exercise then. And that's part of that too, I'm gonna nourish myself well. I'm actually gonna make sure I uh, make food today so that I have it tomorrow. So that when I, you know, I do a couple hours of writing or something like that, or you know, not answering people's mental health questions and things like that, uh, then there's gonna be food there and I can nourish myself well. Uh, go and do some exercise, spend some more time, you know, learning and reading, uh, take time to do some calls and things like that, go for a walk, spend some time in nature, that all of those are how I'll measure progress. Like one of the things I measured progress with when I was working on the book because I was spending so much time alone, uh, I measured progress by how much time I spent with other people and particularly did I schedule social events with other people a far better measure of progress than judging the presence or absence of anything in my head and yeah well I was writing a book sometimes yeah maybe you know I'd get stuck on something and then I would just notice I'd end up like watching a bunch of YouTube videos for a while or something like that uh, and telling myself oh well I've, I've you know I'm not sure what to do I've got a I've got a unwind or I've got a you know feel ready to write the next step and yeah very clear compulsion but then not getting all upset about that like oh I've done something wrong it's about recognizing oh yeah I listened to my brain I was trying to control a feeling and I just wasted a bunch of time on something that actually I thought would make me feel good but now I just feel worse okay I don't have to hate on that I understand why that happened and then we come back to what do I actually want to be doing and how do I do that well and if I don't want to get caught up in those compulsions again how do I make that easy for myself how do I support myself so next time I can go in a different direction so I'm, I'm really curious this is you know something that we can discuss further in the comments down below. Feel free to share about what your duck or your ducks are. What do you wanna to move towards? What do you wanna do well? How can we measure progress around actions that you can do, that you can give? Um, yeah, and there'll be some uncomfortable experiences. There'll be some things you do that you don't like. 
uh, and they, they can be here, uh, but also they're not the focus. Yeah, they're just experiences that we have and we navigate while we do the things that we care about.